If you are an independent artist and you are trying to grow your fans, your followers, your listeners, your business, or if you're a record label and you're doing this on behalf of your artists, one of the best things you can do is to take the time to record and understand your data. Now, for growing on Spotify specifically, when we're looking at streams, when we're looking at followers of your profile, Spotify for Artists gives us a lot of data and a lot of insight into how we're growing on the platform but it's just not quite enough. So today we're gonna to walk through how I record my data, what I keep track of, how I calculate it out, and why I do those things. Now, if you're new here, my name's Tom, and on this channel, we talk about music marketing, branding, business, and a host of other things that are gonna help us move from making music as a hobby to making music as a business. And today we're talking about how to track calculate and understand all of the data that comes along with releasing music on Spotify. What we're going to do is we're going to dig into a spreadsheet that I've created that I use to track all of my release data for every song that I put out on Spotify. I don't keep track of other platforms outside of Spotify because I find that Spotify those numbers are very indicative of how a song is gonna perform elsewhere. Plus, the largest portion of traffic and user engagement by far happens on Spotify for my music. And my guess is it's probably the same for you too. So we're gonna dig into this spreadsheet. We're gonna talk about all of this data, why I track it, and how I do it. Now, before we get into the spreadsheet itself, I wanna talk about Spotify for Artists. Spotify for Artists has a lot of information in it that's very useful if you're trying to keep track of your data and understand how you're growing as an artist. One of the key problems with Spotify is a lot of its data doesn't get granular enough and a lot of its data only happens day of, meaning you can't have a historical look back at how things performed in the past. So for example, in the audience tab on Spotify for artists, you do have some historical data at the top here, listeners, streams, and followers. You can select from the drop down here and you can see it all the way back from 2015. But when you scroll down the page, the next section is only a snapshot of the current day. So under your source of streams, you have over the last 28 days as of today, what has happened by percentage across your profile. You can't go look at that from 60 days ago. You can't go look at that from your release that you dropped last year at this same time. If you keep going down, the same thing applies to your 28 day cycle on your gender, your age, listeners also like, top countries, and top cities. You only have a snapshot that's available to you today. If you want to know what the difference was between today's numbers for the trailing 28 day window and last week's numbers from this exact same day last week for the trailing 28 day window, you can't do that unless you write it down. And this is one of the key reasons I keep track of this data elsewhere outside of just Spotify for artists. So if we hop over to my spreadsheet, this is what I use to record all of the data for every song that I release on Spotify and everywhere else. If you've watched some of my videos, as I said before, you will recognize this, you've seen this. However, I have continued to update this template and this way that I track things. There are a lot of new fields in here that I haven't had in the past, and there are going to be updates to this in the future. So before I go any further, I will tell you, in the description of this video, there is a link to download the most recent version of this template that we're gonna be looking at in this video. So if you wanna have this exact template for your releases, at the time that this video comes out, hit the link in the description of this video and you can have free access to it. It's a Google Sheet and all you have to do is select all, copy and paste into a new sheet in your Google Drive and you can edit it easily and it's yours for free. You're welcome. So looking at my spreadsheet here, I break it down starting from, we'll start from the top and we'll work our way down. I break it down into four weeks and I only use this spreadsheet from the day of a new release through the fourth Friday of that release. So I start it on Friday, which is the first day of any release, day one here in the yellow. I've got four weeks, week one at the top, two, and so on and so forth, into three and four. So I track four weeks starting on Friday of release. And I've got the days numbered, one all the way through day 28, which is the final Thursday of the release cycle. And the reason I do this is because this is the window of time that's gonna apply to release radar, and the highest chance of getting on Discover Weekly. So that's why it's important that I wanna track this data and this information because I wanna understand when I do trip the algorithm, what are the key factors here 
that have happened previously in other releases when I've done the same thing? Where are the consistencies so that I can repeat this performance? And when I don't hit it, I want to see how this release stacked up compared to maybe the release that did hit it or other releases that didn't hit these algorithmic playlists. So I can understand data as it grows and evolves over time. The more data I get, the more I record in this spreadsheet, the better of an understanding I'm going to have for how to make my music perform out of the gate the next time I drop a song. And the way I'm able to do that, jumping all the way down to the bottom of the page, is I create a tab for every new song that I release. So at the very bottom here, you can see that I've got tabs for songs all the way back to last year for Must Be Dreaming, which is when I started keeping track of this. And this spreadsheet has evolved over time. So coming back up to the most recent version of this with Hero, which is the last song I put out, coming back down the page here, we've got the number of weeks, week one, 28 days, the date that the song comes out on, this date will change and everything else will auto populate and calculate if you want to use this spreadsheet for yourself. So all you have to do is change this one cell. And from here, this information is pulled from the music tab on Spotify for artists. So if we go to the music tab here on Spotify for artists, I change this drop down here to 24 hours, seven days and 28 days. And I record all of the information that's in that line for the song. So that's why I've got this field for the last 24 hours, seven days, in 28 days. Now moving forward, I can see a place where I probably will not keep track of 24 hours and seven days because I'm gonna get all that information out of the 28 day window anyway. And that's generally what I'm tending to look at when I compare releases. Now everything in blue in this section is calculated. So this is calculated, the stream rate. This is calculated, stream rate and save rate, which is a function of how many people are saving the song versus number of listeners, how many people are streaming the song versus number of listeners, and then also stream rate and save rate here. So this auto automatically calculates as well. From here, I pulled this information from the actual song tab. So if I go to hero and I scroll down to source of streams, as I said in the audience tab, this is cycling on a 28 day window that you only have access to as a snapshot on the specific day you check. So for release, I check this every single day and I record this as a percentage across this entire category here. And then the last thing I record per song is the number of playlists in total that the track is on. So as you can see, the first day this song came out, it was on a total of seven playlists. It got seven playlists adds that day, and it was total number of playlists it was on at all was seven. And now it is on 414 playlists. So Obviously, playlist performance has been really good for this track. Coming down to the next section of yellow, a new data source is global metrics. Now, this information I pull from the audience tab in Spotify for Artists. Same thing. I come through here, I check everything, and I write it down. So you've got the last 24 hours, listeners, streams, and followers. This is information that I pull from the top tab here, listeners, streams, and followers. And I pull the information as of the day. So if I were recording today, I would put 787 streams, which is how many I've gotten today. Write it down, all of it, and then the number of new followers is automatically calculated compared to the followers from the previous day. So I can see how my follower count is growing as well, which is really helpful information to have. After that, source of streams, I pull that from this exact section here in the audience tab instead of the song tab, like we discussed before. And then we come down to the next section, which is ad metrics. Ad metrics comes from Facebook ads. And the reason I record all this information from Facebook ads is I want to understand how my money is working for me as I am marketing my music. So I record several different things in here. Again, all of the blue, these six rows right here, all of this is calculated based on the numbers above. Underneath the ad level here, I'm calculating how much money I'm spending every day, how many link clicks I'm getting, landing page views, and conversions. From there, the rest is calculated. The cost per click, the cost per landing page view, the cost per conversion. Now this new section I've added, the landing page views per click. How many people who have clicked on my ad are actually landing on the landing page? The conversions per landing page view. Of those people, how many are converting? And then the conversions per click. Of the people who are clicking, how many are converting? I really like having this information because this will tell me how my ad is performing. Is my ad creative good? Is the section of the song I picked any good? 
How does it stack up to other songs that I've released in the past? This is really good information to have because you will be able to see a pattern of what works with your audience and what doesn't work with your audience. And then the very last part of this spreadsheet is from the Spotify developer app. So if you go to developer.spotify.com, you can go to get track or get artist and you can find what's called a popularity score. Now, if you don't know anything about what this is, you can watch this video right here and it will talk you through everything about popularity score, why it matters, what it means, and uh, the fact that, that Spotify calculates it and we can just go grab it. A popularity score is a very important thing to know about your song. So I will track the song's popularity score and my popularity score is an artist because again, I want to see these patterns play out over time. I want to understand how this data is affected by the amount of money I'm spending, uh, how my ads are performing, all of these percentages on the page here for landing pages per click, conversions per click, uh, people listening from my profile or algorithmic playlists. Being able to look at all this data and watch how it interacts over time, how it changes, adjusts, ebbs and flows is a very important thing for me to understand how my music marketing efforts are working. So I know this is a lot. I know it's super nerdy as well, but if you're anything like me and you like data, a good old fashioned spreadsheet is a great way to keep track of all this data and keeping track of all this data is a great way to improve your marketing over time. This time last year, I had about a hundred followers on Spotify. I had very few streams and I didn't have a clue what I was doing. I had just started trying to dig into Facebook ads. Fast forward a year later, I have over 5,000 followers. I have multiple songs over 50,000 streams and my song lines is over 100,000 streams. This stuff works. Keeping track of your data works. Knowing how your money is being spent, knowing who's listening, why they're listening, what the patterns are, all of this stuff works and it's very, very helpful. So as I said before, there's a link in the description of this video to a template of this exact spreadsheet. I highly encourage you to go check it out, download it, copy it, paste it into your own Google Drive and start using this to track your releases because it will help a ton. Now, obviously there's some granularity, some data that I'm not recording here. This thing's gonna change over time. As it does, that link will change over time. So you will always have access to the most up-to-date version of the spreadsheet that I'm including at that link. So that's it for this one. And before I let you go, if you don't subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And at the end here, I got a couple videos you can check out, including at the top, the one on Spotify's popularity score. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.